Hey, long time no see. <clears throat> this is Ego and Vice. This is episode 27. You've got a real attitude problem, McFly. You're a slacker. Hey all, what's going on? It's Mike. This is Ego and Vice, episode 27. This is a kind of a back-to-back thing because um, I'm probably going to have two out this week, two uh, two podcasts out. Um, sometimes the schedule just kind of falls in my lap and I have to accommodate uh, pe- other people's schedules and uh, as well as coincide it with mine. So, um, ah, so I'm not going to... Um, Yammer on like I normally do uh, on the podcast. I did a podcast a couple days ago with uh, Laura Andrews and uh, listened to it back. And I think the intro was about 17 minutes long about me talking about fucking stuff. So I'm not going to do that this time. I'm going to go directly into an interview that I have with a local musician. Her name is Sarah Scriver. She is a... uh, a guest here in uh, South Hood Studios. We had a great conversation and um, about what she's doing, about uh, what's coming up, and a lot about her history, um, important history that she covered. And I think uh, it's worth a listen anyway. We talk about her um, career, her, her 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 budding career. She's a she's a young person though. She just turned eighteen. But she, uh, as we cover during the episode, she's an old soul. And uh, the music that she creates is uh, it's beautiful. And she's very talented. And she's beyond her years. Uh, she um, has had a uh, eventful life. We talk about a lot of uh, we talk a lot about uh, mental illness and the problem of bullying today in um, schools and just in society in general so important stuff that we uh we cover and uh i'm really proud of this interview and i'm really uh happy that she came out to <clears throat> be on the show so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get right into it because uh i don't have really that much to say um yeah let's just do it okay so uh this is uh miss sarah scriver this is eagle and vice episode 27 Welcome to Southwood Studio. Welcome to Ego and Vice. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Of course, of course. I wanted to have you on for a while. Um, I've known you through uh, where I, f- I think I f- where I first met you is through Jason Watts. Yeah. Okay. Normally, what I do for Ego and Vice is I'll start way back at the beginning, but I'm going to try something different for this episode. Let's start with where you are now, and then we can work our way back if you if you want. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So on that note, or let's just do random things. <laughs> who's who's Jason Watts to you? Who is this guy? Jay is my so he's like the cool uncle or like brother. You know what I mean? He's my manager. He's my best friend. I text him randomly throughout the day, just about random things and music things, of course. Uh-huh. But he basically took me under his wing like three years ago now, and um, I've been with him, and he's been representing me ever since. Um, I've known Jay for a long time and he's one of my best friends and I can vouch for him if you don't know him very well yet. He's a good dude. <laughs> he's pretty rad. <laughs> but he took you under your his wing because you are a musician and you write amazing songs and you wanted to perform. Let's talk about um, just what you're doing right now. So right now I'm actually um, recording my third, f- um, well my first full length but my third um, record I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I was just in the studio last week. Um, we have about eight songs ready. I'm not sure how many more we, we want, but um, uh, I'm basically just writing a whole bunch and recording. Okay. Did you go up to Skylark Park again? Yeah. Yeah. So I decided to change it up. Um, I was with Shoebox Studio for Mind Over Matter, and they're great. I love them, but I think I, it was time to move on, you know? Musicians, we got to change it up, so. Yeah, well, there's nothing wrong with some variety, too, you know what I yeah. mean? Uh, I should take my own advice, because I've been recording with Jay-Z for probably about 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? I'm an old fart, so it's just like, I find something that works. I have I have problems with change. But Jordan's so cool, you know? Like, he just... He's a top oh, he's God. a top shelf individual. He's so much fun. Yeah. Um I do this podcast and I have some recording equipment and, and I'm in a band with uh, my friend Steph and we just do like acoustic stuff. Mm -hmm. And I've always said like, "Oh, uh, now that I'm kind of working my way through this, we can always record our own stuff." Yeah. And I'm sure I could figure it out, but part of the process for me of of being a musician or in a band is writing the songs getting them together till they're ready to go, performing the songs, and then recording them. And I like going up to the studio. It's all part of that process for me. Yeah. And I figure if I put all the stress into trying to record it myself and stuff like that, it probably wouldn't be as it wouldn't be as much fun. Yeah. So Jordan is a big part of of the process for me. And I'm I'm really glad that you know him because he is a great person to have as someone just to just to pick his brain, ask questions, just listen to his stories. He's, the guy knows everything there is to know about music. He's worked with so many cool people. Yeah, and he's absolutely brilliant. He is. Like, no. just being able to sit in a room with him and just see what he does to your songs is incredible. Yeah. He's so, so brilliant. Yeah, and he's fast, too. And, oh I, and I appreciate that. We got through four songs in four days. Four songs in four days, Jesus. We the last goat. It was e insane. The last goat EP we recorded, we did it in one day. Four songs, boom. Amazing. But I'm not super picky when it comes to stuff like that. <laughs> I used to be. I'm not anymore. All right. So, um, where did you? When did you start playing guitar? Or let me let me even back this up further. When did you actually start writing songs? Were they always songs? Was it poetry? Was it just words on paper? Well, I. I've been playing piano for most of my life. I actually started playing on an organ that would take like a third of a second to actually like play. So I was all, I actually learned like a delayed version of like a whole bunch of songs because it had to like match up timing wise. It was, it was really weird. Okay. Um, but I started playing guitar probably when I was 11, I would say. And then I started writing not shortly after. And it was mostly just like stupid, like, kitty songs or whatever and sometimes it was poetry or like short stories but um I really got into writing with music and I thought that was so much fun just being able to ma manipulate my words um with um music yeah 11 years old that's amazing because I think when I was 11 I was still, like playing in the mud yeah, well, there was a lot of that too. <laughs> oh, okay, so you, you split it up, but I didn't. Yeah. I didn't have that vision. Did you know, like, at that young age, that this was something that was uh, a passion of yours? Like, uh, how do you how do you even wrap that in your brain when you're 11? Like, this is something I might want to do. Like, I'm looking forward to the future at 11 years old. I, I was just like, now, 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 mud. <laughs> yeah, well, there was a lot of just now, but and I didn't think I knew at the time that I wanted to pursue music for the rest of my life, but um. I was so passionate about it mm. and I loved it so much. Mm. So um, I think it was just kind of natural for me to pursue it longer. Okay. When you were that young, when you were uh, 11, um, you must have been influenced by things too. Like there must have been people or artists or something you saw on TV or maybe the internet. Yeah. Well, what, was, what, was, what was going on around you at that time as far as music? My parents always had music playing around the house like radio every single morning records when we came home from school that kind of thing so i think i was always surrounded by music that was so much older than i was mm -hmm. um like just constant 70s 80s music kind of thing so i grew up with a lot of those influences and i never really had my own music taste because i always just had my parents and then when i got a little bit older i was kind of like maybe i don't like this stuff and um I started making my own decisions like music taste wise mm -hmm. um and that was just like more modern pop and I got influences from them but I still find I'm grabbing from that older style mm -hmm. still which I think is really cool cool and uh I don't want to ask any personal questions but uh I'm going to anyway um Go. 
<laughs> are you an only child or did you have siblings or i have a twin brother okay i am older two minutes it still counts <laughs> okay the reason i'm asking that is because you were talking about influence of music in the house your parents and stuff like that and mm-hmm. i've touched on the podcast before of a lot of people kind of follow their older sibling what their the older sibling is listening to when yeah. i was a kid my sister loved like Corey hart and glass mm-hmm. tagger and all these canadian like pop bands and stuff and that's what i liked until yeah. i found my own way right so mm-hmm. being two minutes older than your brother um mm. i guess other than your parents you just kind of found your own way too like well i also you, you, i have an older sorry. brother as well oh okay well mm-hmm. that just that, that exactly exactly <laughs> there we go yeah okay um, yeah i have um my brother's 20 right now so he's um three years older than me mm-hmm. um and uh so for the longest time i was a metalhead as well oh very good i um, respect that yeah so like i know like iron maidens like just entire just all of it mm-hmm. uh, metallica megadeth all that stuff so yeah i'm a i'm a pretty big uh i won't call myself a metal head anymore i've always been like a snotty punk rock kid mm-hmm. but i do <laughs> i do love the metal yeah. yeah and metallica is a it was a game changer for me back in like the late 80s yes the late 80s <laughs> <clears throat> anyway so past 11 you kept writing stuff well, let me ask you a quick question though when you were writing stuff at 11 years old do you remember any of it do you still have it can you still go back and read it oh gosh was there something that stuck out to you i probably still do have it but i'm a little bit nervous to look at it just because it's probably like i went to the store and i bought candy um that's it well that's kind of cool right (laughs) and it's all on like one chord you can put that to like a song (laughs) there's worse songs out there it's true that are making millions of dollars (laughs) um Okay, so you didn't stay 11 forever. Then you started to progress and get older. Um, was there a time when you like wrote something down and it was like an actual structured song and you said, wow, this is like I've actually done, you know, it's not just writing songs about going to the candy store or something in one chord when you kind of sat back and went, I might have something here. Yeah, um, I worked with Ryan Malcolm. He won um, can- the first season of Canadian Idol. Oh, yeah, I remember so, that, dude. Yeah, so he was my vocal coach for... Um, those first few years Mm -hmm. Um, and we wrote together a couple times and I remember the first song that we wrote together was like an actual piece of music it wasn't like just a piece of garbage Um, and I was so excited I was like I can actually freaking do this like this is it it is an exciting thing when a when a song comes together Mm -hmm. Um, I was um, I always talk about how like I go through these really bad like writer's block like these slumps where I can't write anything and everything sounds like crap and uh, it you don't know what it is like one day I'll sit down here with my guitar and I'll write something that's super similar to everything else I've done and and I, I hate it and then the next day I'll sit down and I'll do the exact same process but just for some reason one extra little chord or one extra little something and then you get that feeling like wow and then it starts like yesterday it was like pulling teeth every note was pulling teeth but then you get that little spark and then everything just starts flowing and you're like wow this is this is going good yeah i'm a very situational writer i find like something has to happen to me and then i'm like 20 minutes and i have a song it's so strange okay like lyric wise you mean just like or are you just talking about uh, the music as well like everything okay it's it's like i don't i don't know anyone else that does that it's really strange well, no, I guess you inspire, something inspires you and then you get mm-hmm. on that flow and, yeah. you know, the, that process of f- starting a song and then feeling good about the song and then finishing it and then recording it and performing it. It's just like, that's what it's all about, right? Yeah, it feels really good. Like, um, a lot of times I actually write songs and perform them before I record them okay. just to kind of gauge um, the crowd and like see if they like it and if I should keep it on the record or like if I should record it at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and I find that very fascinating. Because they're like, I don't know what's happening. I've never heard this song before. But they're also like, this might be good. Mm-hmm. So when did you actually start um, performing like solo? I was with School of Rock for the longest time. And I performed there ever, like live. Um, School of Rock, is that, where you, is that where you and Jay met? Yeah. Oh, okay, I didn't yeah. know that. Maybe yeah. I did. I don't know. Yeah, so I met Jay in 2014. Yeah. Um, at School of Rock, he mentored me. Um, kind of shaped me into a more confident being. And mm-hmm. then I was finally able to hit the stage. And I did that for two years, I guess. And then I did my first solo show. I don't remember what my first solo show was, but um, I was probably very nervous. Okay. <laughs> um, and I think just being able to control the entire show myself and being able to just 
do my own thing and kind of get lost in it was so much more therapeutic than performing with a group. Control freak, hey? A little bit. Okay. Definitely. That's fair. I'm one. Mm-hmm. I, I'm very like OCD. Like for real. <laughs> well, that's cool. I'm a very big jerk. <laughs> you know, do it my way or, yeah. you know, but that's cool. Um, so when you started performing your solo stuff, uh, how's it been? Like, what have you done? What's going on? Um, I did Juno Fest last year, which was so much fun. Mm-hmm. I did Marvest. Um, I've done a whole bunch of, um, there's just like little shows around Ottawa. Um, my album release party was super fun. Was that at Pressed? Yeah, it was. I was there. Yeah, you performed. Yeah, and uh, was that, did the Copper Altar play that night? Yeah. Oh, I don't remember. I oh, just geez. remember you playing and I was just I remember like, you, you had to stop halfway through songs to tune. And it was so that funny. That could be an array of many, many shows. Oh my uh, God, I, it was I have, so funny. I loved it. You guys were killing us. Oh, well, I, I, don't sh- I don't shy away from hamming it up because I put myself in these <laughs> humiliating situations on a daily <laughs> basis. So I come out of them, I'd be like, hey, with some humor. That's all mm-hmm. I can do. Well, um, I remember a show, I, um, my guitar strap fell off and yeah. the whole guitar swung down. I didn't drop it, thank God, but it was just like silence. And I was like... Like, what do I do? So you, I, you, the show must go on. So I literally was like, okay, while I fix this, mm. someone tell a joke and you'll get a free CD. And it happened and it worked. I was like, oh, yes. That's the way you deal with stuff like that. Yeah, there's, a, there, there's like a rule in, in, in playing in bands um, that I've lived by for a long time is that the worst thing you could ever do if you're on stage with a band and you fuck it up somehow is to stop and be like, oh, oh, and make a big oh, deal out of it yeah, no. and then start over again or something like yeah. that. You just work through it. Yeah. Even if like people, a lot of people haven't heard you before, so they don't really know. No. You kind of make light of it. You have fun with it. You mm-hmm. pick up the best you can as you go. Yeah. You finish the song. You look at each other and be like, <laughs> and you <laughs> laugh, you laugh it off. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So guitar strap falling off, mm-hmm. tuning in the middle of the song. I should have tuned great. before the song, but I forget these things. Right? I think you did, though. I think your guitar just kept going out. Uh, Possibly. I don't know. It was great, though. Yeah, because I'm super cheap and I don't buy new stuff. So it was an old, old, old I, equipment. Yeah. I've only had one guitar since I started playing. So there you go. Okay. When you do shows, though, and I've seen you perform, and you're amazing, by the way. You're an old soul, eh? Definitely. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. Um. You don't just stick to guitar when you play because you play your guitar on stage mm. and you also do... I play my piano. Right. Yeah. I play my piano when I want to be a pain in the ass to Jay and mm-hmm. make him carry it up the stairs. Well, he... Yeah. <laughs> well, I've played in a band with this guy for most of my adult life and I know about Hall and Drum stuff. I like stopped like 10 years ago. <laughs> he has this... He has this big black like fabric like coffin shaped bag that he puts all the drum hardware in Mm -hmm. and he's been lugging that thing around for years and it weighs about 150 pounds yeah and we used to help him like grab an end and stuff like that then the wheels fell off it at one point and he's just (laughs) just dragging it (laughs) so you know yeah so when i feel like being a pain in the ass i'm like you know what i'm gonna play piano on two songs out of this hour set Mm mm-hmm and what do you prefer or is it the same if you do a guitar song or if you do a piano song is there one that you struggle yeah. with or get nervous more about i definitely get more nervous when i play guitar because i'm like oh shit i have to tune mm-hmm. somewhere in this set and what's I'm not good what's at, that yeah <laughs> what's that says the guy who tunes halfway through his song <laughs> <laughs> no i'm not good at talking and tuning so it just goes silent i'm like <laughs> hi mm. everyone <laughs> i need to work on that well that's who you are you yeah. know what i mean like that's fine yeah if that's your stick that's cool you yeah. know people have to you know you're you're 18 yeah, I just turned eighteen. You have your entire life ahead of you. You have you're gonna have so many humiliating things on stage that you're oh. gonna that's gonna happen. I know it's it's oh god. Guitar straps and tuning. That's nothing. That's literally nothing. That's I remember you, you I just hit- scratched the surface of humiliation. <laughs> I hit myself in the face with the head of my guitar mm-hmm. like five minutes before hitting the stage one time, and I had a bloody nose. Oh, and I was like, you should have used it. Just yeah, just smear all over done my done face. like the war paint. Yeah. <laughs> oh. And I was like, this is it. This is the end of my career. And looking back on that, I'm just like, that is so dramatic. The end of your career. I was like, at honey, 17 years old. Yeah, yeah that's I was pretty like, dramatic. Girl, come on. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. So, um, what uh, what have you been doing lately, other than recording your new? Uh, so you said you had three releases. I know Mind Over Matter. I didn't know you mm-hmm. had a second one. Now I do, and I'm kind of anxious to hear it. Yeah, well, actually, Mind Over Matter was my second one. Oh shit! Well, no. so I have this. Okay, I don't like it very much. 
but I think that's okay to say because I'm, I was like 12 when it came out. You had a release when you were 12 years old. Yeah. Do you want, okay, are you ready to cringe? Do you want to hear the, the Oh, name? it's going to take a lot to make me cringe. It's, it was called Stories. Oh. Uh, yeah, right? We're like, okay, no, no, I'm good. That's awesome. <laughs> no, fuck, I'm just kidding. Okay, that's cool. You're 12 years old. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, I was 12. You know, to have that kind of, mine, mine would have been called like poop. Uh, poop. <laughs> <Yeah>. Mud. <laughs> Poopy head. I don't know. <laughs> I was 12, you know? So that's incredible. Like, what was that all about? Stories. Um, I, I jumped... I, I went from 11 to, like, 18. I forgot to good. ask you about 12. I so. mean, like, those years don't matter. No, I'm just kidding. A lot happened in those years, actually. Um, no. Stories was about... Um, it wasn't a concept album. It was just a collection of songs that I had written um, with Ryan, and we recorded them in a tiny basement studio in Kingston. Um... And Kingstown. Was, yeah. Um, and it was cute and it was great and I was so excited and I think that's important. Mm -hmm. But I wish someone was like, you know what, we're going to nurture you a little bit more and then put your first album out. Mm -hmm. But it's all good. It's all good, man. Mm -hmm. um, typically, what are, your, uh, uh, what are your lyrics about? What are your songs about? My songs are always very personal. Okay. Very personal. I usually kind of wrap them in metaphors so you don't exactly know what they're about mm -hmm. but if you knew me personally you'd be like okay i know exactly what she's talking about um but i think it's cool because the way i wrap them in metaphors i think a lot of people can relate to so they can take their own um experiences and kind of fit them into this little mold that i've made into the song mm -hmm. uh absolutely mm -hmm. so as i said at the beginning of the podcast um i was going to start at the present and work my way backwards challenge for me uh, i guess so <laughs> um let's talk about um growing up there was a period there where you said between 11 and where you are now lots of stuff happened yeah do you want to talk about that yeah i do okay so um i was 14 when i experienced my first severe bullying episode so i was basically pushed into a locker at school and um had a major concussion and amnesia. So I forgot a year of my life. I had to re-meet Jay. I had to redo school. I had to re-meet all my friends. Um, it was it was tough. Wow. Yeah. Um, bullying is a, uh, a huge thing in the world. It shouldn't be. Um, it goes on every day. Um, I know some of your story um, from us... I suppose, knowing each other for a bit. We've never really had a conversation like this before about it. Yeah. I wasn't sure really how much you wanted to talk about, but as mm -hmm. I've read on your website and as I know you, getting to know you better, I know that you are very open about it. You're very open about yeah. mental health. I think it's really important that people are because that'll reduce the stigma around it. Yeah, it's just like <clears throat> depression is not just being sad and no. anxiety is not just, you know, having a, you know, a, a moment and... I don't know, really know where to go um, or what questions to ask you. I'd rather you just kind of tell your story if yeah, you wanted to. Sure. This this part of your story. Because yeah. I know this part of the story really leads into where you are now. Absolutely. Um, what you're doing now. The music that is coming out of you because of these experiences. Mm -hmm. um, for someone being um, at such a young age and have uh, experienced so much in writing the music that you, you do, I think it's all going to be a... a you know, it all it all wraps up into one thing. So I, yeah. I'd I'd love to hear the story if you want to tell it. Yeah. So um, all of my experiences and trauma have definitely made me who I am today, and have allowed me to write um, the Mind Over Matter EP, which basically goes through the five stages of um, trauma. So um, yeah, I was pushed into logger at fourteen, lost my, my memories, and of course went into a deep depression, mm -hmm. um, as one can expect. Um, and I guess I went through. Um, like therapy and all that stuff. And I was finally diagnosed with um, OCD. And I don't know why no one has seen it before because I've been like this my entire life. Mm -hmm. um, but it was just kind of clicked. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I need to get this checked out because I was spending hours washing my hands, taking like more than four showers a day, cleaning my room every single day. Like it was ridiculous. Um, so I was like, I, I need help. Um, I need to get this like checked out so um yeah i was diagnosed with ocd and then in april of 2014 i had my first seizure 
So um, that was really scary because no one really knew what was going on. I'd never had seizures before in my life. And what was that related to, like the seizures? Like what happened? Like, whoa. So um, I've had a history of concussions. Um, the first concussion at four, or my, sorry, um, the concussion that I had at school um, was not my first one. I had two previous ones. So I've had a lot of head trauma. So mm-hmm. the, the seizures were related to just head trauma and my brain being just like, what is happening? Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. So um, I had my first seizure in April of 2014. Um, and I'm actually still struggling with them today. So four years later, I'm just like still getting used to like just, you know, stress and all that. Um, so I had my first seizure and that was really scary. No one knew why I'd never had seizures before in my life. It took them probably about a year to figure out that, um, it was not epilepsy and it was just head trauma. Mm -hmm. Um, And then that, of course, put me back in school. So um, I lost a lot of friends. Um, I wasn't in school anymore, so I was just very isolated and alone. And, of course, fell into another depression, um, which just brought out the absolute worst of me. Um, It was hard. And that's when I I started writing Mind Over Matter. Um, And that was really difficult to try and open up about my experiences. But I knew that if I could help one person... um, it was worth it. Mm. So um, I started writing Mind Over Matter kind of in the order it is now. Um, I started with the first stage, denial, and then I went to anger, bargaining, depression, and hope. Mm-hmm. Um, and I gathered these songs, and I didn't actually realize they were the timeline of trauma until after it was done. And I was like, holy crap, like, you basically wrote what happened to you in the past, like, two years. Right. So I think that's, Yeah. So when it comes to mental health, uh, when it comes to bullying and, and stuff like that, um, do you uh, support any, uh, are there like organizations, are there people um, that experience the same things that they, if they need to talk to somebody, um, are there, do you have any, any advice for people or, or are there things that are out there that you can recommend for, for someone in the same situation? Yeah, so um, I actually do performances at high schools and elementary schools that um, they're called Sarah Talks, and I basically tell my story and incorporate my music into it, um, and I give people hope and advice and say, you know what, bullying's horrible, and you need to get through it, and you need to talk to people, and um, mental health not a joke, nope. break the stigma, that kind of thing, um, and leaving these schools with... Um, the experience and being able to talk to real survivors is so inspiring. I love doing it. Let people know that they're not alone because exactly. uh, mental health can be very isolating to the point where you think you're the only person or you don't want to talk to people. Yeah. And, um, and that leads to huge problems like yeah. suicide. And yeah, and, yeah absolutely. Um, I listened to a uh, podcast. Um, it's called Anxious and Angry. It's from a guy named Ryan Young out of uh, Chicago, Illinois. And his podcast was started about three years ago because he suffers from um, like massive anxiety, depression, mm-hmm. uh, drug addiction, stuff That's like that. Funny. And basically what that podcast is about is just him talking about his experiences. People write in telling them um, their experiences and he will give the best advice you can because not everybody can afford to go to like a psychologist. Exactly. Or so, you know, so they suffer in silence or they suffer alone or they think they're, they're the problem. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And sometimes just finding somebody who can relate to, um, what you're going through, uh, and just talking Mm -hmm. is huge for, for these people who suffer from this to find that they're not alone and there are other people that can, you know, who understand what's happening. Yeah. That's that's a huge part of these talks that I do is just letting kids know my peers my age know that they are not alone and it's amazing yeah good for you thank you you should start a podcast <laughs> i don't know i'll give you the tools <laughs> i'll show you how well i think that is incredibly um uh noble of you i think it's very brave of you thank you and um you should be proud of yourself and you know even if you help one person then you help one person you know what i mean mm-hmm. so keep it up thank you um on that note let's play something off mind over matter what would you like to hear? Um, let's play Flair, my single. Okay, so this is off the 2016 release from Sarah Scriver. This uh, is off the EP Mind Over Matter. This song is called Flair. All right, this is Ego and Vice. You 
You stole my book and threw all the pages And now I'm left with nothing but a rage And now that I can't see you any clearer I won't let you get any nearer You push me into the ground, but So that was Flair from uh, Sarah Scriver off of the 2016 release, Mind Over Matter. So where where do you see yourself? Like, where you, what do you want to do with your life? Because your life has just begun. You have no idea. I know. I'm just a baby still. I know. It's crazy. And you've had so much <laughs> success and you seem to like know yourself so well and you know what you want to do and you're doing mm-hmm. your best to, you know, get that out there. If I had your like uh, uh, drive when I was... 16 years old 17 years old Jesus Christ I probably wouldn't be sitting here (laughs) but I'm happy I am Mm -hmm. and uh, I've enjoyed our conversation but where do you see yourself going what do you want to do oh gosh I don't know man I'm like I'm a baby I'm still figuring things out realistically I'd love to release this record maybe do a little tour across Mm -hmm. Canada maybe overseas Um, just have fun you know with this record and play music and yeah. Are you still in school? I am, yeah. Are you in high school? Yeah, I'm in grade 12. Craziness. Yep. Do you want to go to college? Yeah. Do you want to I... fo- do you want to follow your uh your 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 buddy uh Jay and maybe go into school for music? Probably not. Like I have like two sides of my brain. I have like my musical logical or my sorry. I have two sides of my brain. I have like my musical brain and then I have like my logical brain. Mm-hmm. So I have my musical with like just all my music and writing and that sort of thing but then i also have like my very scientific logical brain Mm -hmm. which wants to like go into medicine so amazing half of me is like go do music and tour and like just live off of that and then the other part of me is like go to university and become a doctor and i'm like i don't know what i want to do well either way i'm sure you'll be successful um one thing that you have inside of you is music and is um um the drive to be artistic because I yeah. can, I know that about you anyway. So even if you go to school and you want to go into the medical field, music will always follow you for your entire life. You'll Definitely. never lose that. No. And it doesn't matter if you become, you know, a huge rock star. It doesn't matter <laughs> if, you know, in 10 years time from now, you're still playing in clubs for whatever. I, I hope 
the best for you. And I, I think you have more than enough talent and tools to get there. Mm -hmm. But never give it up. Always keep helping people. Yeah, I just want to help people. And I don't know if that's through music or through medicine. So, I guess well, we'll do out. both. Yeah, because I can do you both. probably will. You know probably. what I mean. <laughs> At 18 years old, like I said, your life is ahead of you. You have a great support system. I do. Yeah. Um, I've met your mom. She's oh my gosh. And she's, she's like your mom. biggest fan. She is. I could literally fart into a mic, and she'd be like, "My baby." Don't fart into my mic, because <laughs> you'll take it home. <laughs> anyway, okay. So cool, man. Um, I'm gonna do uh, the rapid question period with you. Every time somebody comes on ego and vice. They're forced to do it. Okay, I'm excited. But it's kind of fun, right? Yeah. And I think I put together some questions for you. All right, cool. In light of the situation that you're in the Southwood studio. Are you ready for the rapid questions? Hell yeah, I am. All right, here we go. Questions and answers. Honesty lies. Yes, no, you can't. But you can and you know why. Shit. You must be fuckered, man. Like, what's he talking about? Any questions? So, now that my jingle has faded off into the sunset, as amazing as it was, <laughs> <clears throat> this is episode 27 of Ego and Vice with Sarah Scriver, and this is Rapid Questions. Are you ready? I am. Okay. Question one. What was your favorite music as a kid? Oh my gosh. Um, Veggie Tales. I know that's so strange. She's like super on edge. She's like, ah! <laughs> Or Fleetwood Mac. I okay. love. I still love Fleetwood Mac today. Uh, what's your? Oh, I was about to say, what's your favorite music now? Ooh, um, I listen to everything now. I have like my oldies, like Fleetwood Mac and the Beatles kind of thing that I love listening to. But I also have um, like modern Lord, the Staves, that kind of thing that I like listening to. Cool. Um, dogs or cats? Oh my gosh, that's impossible. I'm like, I love dogs so much. I've never owned a dog, but mm. I love dogs. But I have four cats at home. I can't choose. You're I'm, and, I'm you know, if, if the medical thing doesn't work out, if the music doesn't work out, you'll be a crazy cat lady. Definitely. Which is... I'm set. You know, and, you know, that's something to be proud of. Yeah. <laughs> I have a cat. Where the fuck is that guy? <laughs> um, first concert you ever saw? Avril Lavigne. Oh, in yeah. Ottawa. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very good. Uh, what's your favorite movie? Ooh, That Awkward Moment. Okay. Yeah. Is that a, like a rom-com? It is. Sounds I know that's like a rom-com. so cringy to say that. That's my favorite movie, but I love it so much. Uh, don't worry about what other pe people think, and you know <laughs> that more than anybody. Jesus Christ. If you like something, you like it. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your favorite book? Oh, gosh. I'm a huge book nerd. I read so much. I love the Harry Potter series, but I everyone loves the Harry Potter series, so I'm going to say... Uh, I don't. You don't? You don't like Harry Potter? I don't know. Oh, my gosh. No. Books, okay, the books, the books are The books are very large, and they intimidate me. But, like, but I've never seen a movie either. You Okay. I made Jay start watching Harry Potter. Mm. So we're not through the whole series, but I'm I'm slowly turning him, I think. Yeah, but Jay's a big softie. He has a he has a gruff exterior, but he's a big softie. And apparently he's all oh, a Harry Potter fan. It's true. It's I've funny. already put him into like his own house and everything. It's great. And does he enjoy them? I don't know. I think you do. I like to think he does. Let's say he does. Okay. Very <laughs> good. Um what is the first record C D you ever bought with your own money? Ooh, the first one that comes to mind, and this is hilarious, but it was the Camp Rock soundtrack. I was like a big, like high school musical kid. You know? oh, okay, yeah, I got So gotcha. like the Camp Rock was like, you know, sure. yeah, it was so good. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite band? Ooh, favorite band. Um, probably the Staves. They're um, three sisters, and I got to see them for my last birthday, and they were incredible, and I wanted to cry. And who is your favorite artist? Not so much a band, but... Yeah, uh, definitely Lord. She is my Lord. everything. Cool. <laughs> Very good. Uh, what is the best local show you ever saw? Ooh. You ever seen? I've ever seen. Um, local show. Um, I don't know. Um, You're going to pass, are you? No. Pass! I, no, I need to answer. I've had people pass on this show. Pass! No, I need to answer. Um, local show, local show, local show. Uh, I'm blanking. Can I say Hearts and Minds? Is that cheesy? You can. I like seeing you guys. Was, They're great. Was I in the band at the time? Hell yeah, you were. That was my favorite show too. <laughs> God damn. I knew we'd get along. <laughs> um, okay, this is, this. it is what it is. What's your death row meal? Last meal you'll oh, ever eat. Uh, grilled cheese and french fries. 
Very good. And a chocolate milkshake. Oh, I want that now. Right? Maybe not the milkshake. I'll take a Coors Light, but hey, <laughs> I'm old as balls. Anyway, uh, what is your death row song? Last song you could ever Ooh. listen to before they pull the switch. The Chain by Fleetwood Mac. Nice. Old soul. Mm-hmm. There it is. Yeah. And the final question. You made it through to I the final it. question. Oh. Yay! I'm going to put <laughs> like some applause in here as like yeah. some sound effects. Uh, if you want to, what's the, what has been the best day of your life? Oh, wow. The best day of my life. Um, ah. Bass. No. My 17th <laughs> birthday was pretty great. Why? Jay bought me the Staves tickets, so we saw them, mm-hmm. and they were just... Like we had, f- I was literally pressed against the stage. Like we were, s- I was, Where? I was breathing up their nostrils. Where did you see them? It was at the Bronson Center. Nice. Yeah. That's a cool venue. It is. I've yeah. O- I've, I've never been there before. I've only seen, I've, I've, I've gone to two shows at the Bronson Center and uh, I liked it. Mm-hmm. It's cool. Yeah. I'll and we it. got donuts that day. It was just like a really fun. Forget about the show. You had yeah. donuts. That's Susie the best Q day. Donuts life. too. Can we uh, talk about that for a second? Yeah, but you're probably not going to like my... Oh, my no. rebuttal. Oh, no. Is Susie Q the donuts the one on Richmond in, in the Weeb, the Westboro Glebe? Yeah. I heard a lot about those donuts. Because it's the greatest donuts. You get bacon on them. You get bacon and maple. Do they and make, do they like put like animal bones or something in it? Because I'm a vegetarian. No, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I just, I, I okay, said, okay, good. I'll try these donuts. My girlfriend bought these donuts and she's like, they're Susie Q donuts. They're the greatest donuts ever. And maybe it was like too hyped for me. Oh, I get so that. So I ate the That's donut. Fair. And it was You're just like, like all right, it's, it's, a a fucking, it's a fucking donut. That's fair. It had bacon on it. The bacon was lovely. The bacon maple one? Yeah. Yeah. You're vegetarian. Never, You've never tried it. I've never <laughs> tried it, no. How do you know it's even good? Jay is, that's his favorite. Jay doesn't eat meat. Jay is a meatitarian. Oh, that's right. That's all he eats. Okay. Um, can you plug some of the stuff uh, as far as your music, as far as anything that's going on, any play? Where can we find you? Where you can the can, good public find you? The good public can find me just about anywhere. Um, my website, sarahscrivermusic.com. You can find all of my social media links there. I have Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, that whole thing. Um, all my music is on Spotify, iTunes, and Google Play. Um, it was a pleasure having you in the studio. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm looking forward to your next performance once this uh, the new record comes out. Mm-hmm. But I will enjoy the old stuff. I still want to hear stories. Oh, gosh. Apparently, I've been promised I can listen to some of that. Maybe. Um, but I wish you nothing but the best in the future. Thank and you. And I'm sure uh, we'll catch each other down the road somewhere. Definitely. And I have this little band called the Copper Altar. So if you wanted to like throw us like an opening slot, that'd be awesome too. Yes. I love you guys. You're so cute. Oh, cool. The best. And I promise I'll tune my guitar beforehand. <laughs> so let's go out on one more song off of Mind Over Matter. What would you like to hear? Um, this is my song called Hushed. All right. So this is off of Mind Over Matter. This is uh, Sarah Scriber. This is a song called Hushed. Black hole for a heart and a bullet for a brain The ground is gonna swallow us up any day I see it looking at these four building D walls And that's when I realize I don't want to fall I'm climbing up the fire escape To see if you're awake As I reach the top I wonder if I'm too Must be some mistake If this is an invitation This is heartbreak She left in your bed I'm climbing up the fire escape To see if you're awake As I reach the top I wonder if I'm too late If this is an invitation There must be some mistake If this is an invitation This is a heartbreak 
This has been episode 27 of Ego and Vice. Um, if you want to listen to the podcast, you can always go to iTunes, Podomatic, Facebook, or you can go to egoandvice.com. All the podcasts are up there. They're for free. Um, just check them out there. If you'd like to get a hold of me, you can contact me at egoandvice at gmail.com. If you want to be on the show, uh, if you want your band uh, band's music to play on the show, or if you even want to just come into Southwood Studios and I can make an episode all about you. All right. That's it for me. Uh, this is Ego and Vice. My name is Mike, and uh, I'll see you down the road. You've got a real attitude problem, McFly. You're a slacker.